my name is Flannery O'Connor. You might be wondering about my unusual first name. After all, there's not that many Flannerys out there. I was born on March 25, 1925, in Savannah, Georgia. Mary Flannery O'Connor, but changed my name when I attended the Iowa Writers Workshop and decided to become a writer. I thought, who was likely to buy the stories of an Irish washerwoman? The Flannery I became. I left Georgia for the State University of Iowa in 1946 and received a Master's of Fine Arts degree in 1947. After Iowa, I traveled to New York and lived at the exclusive writer's colony Yotto in Saratoga Springs, then on to Connecticut, where I stayed until 1950. When on a trip home, I became horribly ill, and it was during my hospitalization I discovered I had lupus, the same disease that killed my father nine years earlier. Thus, my return home became permanent, and I lived the remainder of my years at Andalusia, the family farm with my mother and a menagerie of yard birds. I have a particular fondness for the peacock. I can relate to the animal. It's comic, goofy, and awkward, as I have been described. The peacock spreads its tail feathers and transforms into a majestic creature. I see a similar beauty in the manner that my stories unfold. Others say that they are grotesque. To that I say... Anything that comes out of the South is going to be called grotesque by the Northern reader, unless it is grotesque, in which case it's going to be called realistic. Did you know that the peacock was a symbol of Christ in the Middle Ages? And my writing, although Southern Gothic, is viewed from a Christian perspective? My Roman Catholic faith is the cornerstone of my life and my writing. I attend Mass nearly every day, then return home and spend the morning in my room writing while facing the back of my cabinet so I'm not tempted by distraction. There has been much debate about my work and the manner in which I use the grotesque human act <laughs> to tell a story about the moral and theological ills of society. I feel that a violent shock is what is needed at times to bring my audience and characters together. One of the stories that I am most remembered for is A Good Man is Hard to Find. I tire of reading reviews that call a good man brutal and sarcastic. The stories are hard, but they are hard because there is nothing harder or less sentimental than Christian realism. When I see these stories, described as horror stories, I am always amused because the reviewer always has hold of the wrong horror. I believe in grace, divine grace, and that is how I write. There is no sentimental understanding to my work. Grace changes us. I endure the pain and the increasing isolation of lupus for 14 years, nine years longer than they predicted before I passed at 39 on August 3rd, 1964. My works have enjoyed great recognition since it thrills me that my humble life between the house and the chicken yard has led to so many to delve into the stories that I created. And remember, the truth does not change according to our ability to stomach it. Thank <laughs> you.